Now, not to be unpleasant, but I do bring news from our nation's capital. First, the good news. Your national leadership is, well, not good at all. Our presidency has been debased by a figure who seemingly has a bottomless appetite for destruction and division and only a passing familiarity with how the Constitution works. And our Article I branch of government, the Congress, that's me, is utterly supine in the, visit, in the uh, face of the moral vandalism that flows from the White House daily. I do not think that the founders could have anticipated that the beauty of their invention might someday founder on the rocks of reality television and that Congress would be such willing accomplices to this calamity. Our, <laughs> our most ardent enemies doing their worst, and they are doing their worst, couldn't hurt us more than we are hurting ourselves. Now you might reasonably ask, where's the good news in that? Well, simply put, we may have hit bottom. And that's also the bad news. In a rare convergence, the good news and the bad news are the same. Our leadership is not good, but it probably can't get much worse. This is it if you've been wondering what the bottom looks like. This is what it looks like when you stress test all of the institutions that undergird our constitutional democracy at the same time. You could say that we are witnesses to history and if it were possible to divorce ourselves from the obvious tragedy of this debacle, I suppose it might even be interesting. The same way some diseases are interesting to medical researchers. But this is an experience that we could and should have avoided. Getting to this state of distress did not naturally occur. Rather, it was thoroughly man-made. This disease of our polity is far too serious not to be recognized for what it is. The damage it threatens to do to our vital organs is far too great for us to carry on as if all is well. All is not well. We have a sickness of the spirit. To complete the medical metaphor, you might say that we're now in critical condition. How did we arrive at such a moment of great peril wherein the President of the United States publicly threatens on Fox and Friends, historians will note, to interfere in the administration of justice and seems to think that the office confers on him the ability to decide who and what gets investigated and who and what does not. And just this week, the President, offering an outlandish rationale, ordered an investigation into the investigation of the Russian attack on our electoral process not to defend the country against future attacks, mind you, but to defend himself.